Hey all, here OS Reviews. Today we're taking a quick look at the Plod Note. This is a unique AI voice recorder that is powered by ChatGPT. So any notes that you're taking on this thing can be transcribed to text, further organizing the text and sorting it automatically into a format that's easier to revisit and review. So this could be a very powerful and useful tool for situations like meetings, as well as for students. It saves you that time of having to manually go through and kind of organize your own notes or necessarily scribble everything down. Now there's a tool like this that can do it automatically. The actual voice recorder has 64 gigs of built-in storage that it claims can capture up to 480 hours of audio recording. Battery is rated for 30 hours of continuous recording per charge. It's the size of a credit card and it's also magnetic so it can attach onto the back of iPhones with MagSafe or if your device doesn't have MagSafe, there's also a magnetic sticker that comes included in the box. It can also record phone calls in addition to notes. It's designed for iOS products but an Android companion app might be coming in the near future. That is worth pointing out because on the Android world, some of the Google Pixel phones do have very intelligent audio recording functionality built on in as part of the ML functions that Google touts. So I'd say this is more of a missing feature in the Apple ecosystem and could make a bigger impact. Although even on Pixel phones, you don't get quite as many visualization tricks as the plot note here is touting. With that being said, one potential con at the moment is because it is leveraging ChatGPT servers, there is a membership fee to unlock some of the more advanced capabilities like transcription into other languages, or if you want to back up and store more recordings to the cloud over 10,000 minutes. That part I think is a little bit unfortunate, maybe if they could unlock a light version which is offline and built just onto the companion app. Alternatively, maybe offering a one-time payment larger upfront cost as an alternative to a reoccurring subscription-based model. Could be things for them to consider, especially if this product becomes more popular and also launches on other platforms. Otherwise, they claim that the data which is being stored over the cloud is secure, complies with GDPR and EU compliance regulations, and are private. It also comes in three color variants, so there's the black, silver, and a rose gold colorway. And here Here's just a final peek at the weight, only 30 grams, 400 milliamp hour capacity battery, using a combination of Bluetooth and Wi-Fi to connect to the device. Packaging here is quite simple, inside of which we have the actual Plod Note. This is the silver edition. Underneath here we have, of course, the aforementioned carrying case, along with the optional MagSafe sticker that we talked about. Last but not least, we get the charging cable, which is using a magnetic pogo system that sticks onto the back of the Plod Note pretty easily, although it is not quite as universal as something like Type-C. And now taking a closer look at the Plot Note, it is indeed extremely sleek and well-crafted out of aluminum alloy here on the back, a little bit polycarbonate, and it's just extremely slim, but has a good density to it, doesn't feel cheap or hollow. We have some of the microphones on the top, and then the back here houses just the charging contacts. The front here has just a dial that you can switch on to go into a call recording mode where it will be listening to any phone calls and then capturing those versus a regular mode where it's just being used for meetings and lectures. Then there is just a simple power key slash record key that you can tap on for about one second to begin recording. There is also a haptic vibration motor which will vibrate once to give you that indication and when you tap on it once more it will actually give you a double vibration as confirmation that the recording has actually stopped. So it's pretty easy to use and no frills. The synthetic leather case feels quite premium, although it's a bit of a tight fit, though you can easily slide it into the back of the unit. So you don't lose the MagSafe functionality even when you are popping it into the case, which is quite neat, and prevents any scratching from happening, adding a little bit of also grip or traction onto the rear of your phone. Otherwise, the back still reveals the charging contacts which is thoughtfully designed. You don't have to pop it out of the case for charging in addition to using it. All the keys can still be fully controlled. And this would be what it looks like onto the back of a phone, for instance. Of course, the case will increase the thickness by a touch, but still really not bad. Although since it is quite tight fitting, you can't necessarily use this pocket for storing anything else. Maybe they made it a little bit looser or a secondary pocket. It could serve double duty as kind of a magnetic wallet case of sorts for popping in an actual credit card. Something to consider maybe in a next generation model or optional accessory. 
Here's also a quick demo of what it looks like on a device that, again, we have the MagSafe sticker attached, and you can tell that it will also lock itself into place really without any problems. That also looks quite sleek. So here's the Plod Companion app. We just have to press on Add a Device, and it will find the note here automatically. Since the voice recorder has 64 gigabytes of storage, you don't have to be connected to the phone for it to save those recordings, and later on, when connected, it will sync over the data. Generally speaking, using Bluetooth 5.0, it's quite fast, but if you have bigger files, for example, an hour-long meeting or lecture, you may want to use the Wi-Fi connection instead to speed up the file transfer process. In addition, we can tap on your profile to trigger more advanced settings. For example, what type of scene that you are in, whether it's in a meeting, classroom, interview, or kind of a music scenario, it will enter a stereo mode. So although the capabilities of AI and transcription are best suited, as the name implies, when you're using it for voice, it makes the most sense. If you wanted to record a snippet of a concert, for example, or maybe a song that you're practicing, it certainly can do that. The mic gain in terms of the sensitivity can also be increased or decreased up to 30 decibels. And there's even a voice activated recording mode like on other high end voice recorders. If it detects there is a loud enough sound nearby, it will automatically start recording. Similarly, we can record calls automatically or manually and also have the unit turn off after X minutes of inactivity, as well as gauge the firmware version that it's on and the remaining capacity on the memory. So let's proceed to the live demo. I'm gonna to begin to record. Now the voice recorder has started automatically paired again to our phone where we can see also a visualization appear in real time, though it is a little bit choppy since we are connected via Bluetooth at the moment. Still, you can control things quite easily. That red LED is again lit, which indicates we have started to record our voice. Test one, two, three, how will the accuracy be? And now for this particular note, let's play it back just by cranking up the volume a little bit on our phone. Paired again to our phone where we can see also a visualization appear in real time, though it is a little bit choppy since we are connected via Bluetooth at the moment. I'm going to pause that there, and you can hear the overall recording quality is certainly not bad. It's quite a loud microphone that picks up sound quite easily. So say that you're sitting in a lecture and the professor or teacher is 10 or 20 feet away, everything is still mostly audible. In the speech mode, you can hear how it really emphasizes text and clarity of diction as well as spoken words. We have a transcription as well as a chat GPT section that's happening in real time where it's identified the subject of this particular recording being about this voice recorder and Bluetooth and then it summarizes some of those notes about the LED lights, a test recording as bullet points down below, which is crazy. And you can see how it makes learning as well as reviewing notes just so much easier. You can also tap on different visualization styles like the aforementioned mind map, which will regenerate. You do have to zoom in a little bit though, depending on again, the length of your notes. In certain instances, like a brainstorming session, I can see this being very useful. Although on more kind of stream of consciousness based recordings, you can tell how it may not be super concise, and it may actually still be not quite as practical as that bullet list form that we saw there earlier. Still, it's really neat to have this capability, and you can play around with the form. So let's also take a look at the class note format, and it will resummarize once again. By the way, the transcription on the top here is just literally saying the words which are spoken verbatim in the recording and know which parts of the audio to revisit if you wanted to listen back to the track. And the punctuation through the kind of WhisperNet and ChatGPT integration is very smart. So everything in terms of test one, two, three, and you have to correctly place the commas and the period mark there at the end, it's scary good. But again, that ChatGPT section really is the new part. Please let me know if you need any further clarification. So although you don't necessarily have another box here to physically query ChatGPT and ask it to describe more or explain it to me in a different way. So those could be areas that perhaps they can unlock in the future since they are just using, I believe, an API to ChatGPT. But again, takes the excellent transcription and then reprocesses it again through the second section that we see down below. And here's the diary format as well. It even has a title there on the top. And what it says is, today I had the opportunity to explore the fascinating world of voice recorders and their advanced features. I was amazed by their convenience and versatility they offer in capturing audio recordings. Let me share my experience with you. And then it basically integrated all the things that we were talking about, including hyphens, into a much more 
well-written pose-like format, which is just crazy, like a real diary entry. And then it has been modified for educational purposes, uh, which is that disclaimer that we typically see when using ChatGPT. So it really is scary in a way, but clever in terms of integrating that into another format. Now at the very top, we can of course also scrub between parts of the audio recording, play it back while we're looking at those notes if needed. And then perhaps more importantly, you can also share the transcriptions and ChatGPT summarize the variants through text as well. So if we actually click on next, it will prompt us to also now share this as a quick note via messages, email. But anyways, it's always going to be here under your recordings until you physically delete a recording, which we can do by swiping over to the right, either renaming the session or deleting it completely. So a pretty self-explanatory, simple UI that works well enough. We're also going to do a quick demo of music recording. It will tell us that the sampling rate has been increased for higher resolution pick up using stereo microphones, although it's going to take up more space. I will also point out that all of these notes on the actual voice recorder's memory can be looked at on a computer as well if you don't have your phone nearby or if it's out of power. So you can connect the charging cable to the USB port of a Windows or Mac computer. It will be read as a flash drive and you'll see different folders called record, meeting, classroom, interview, music. So case in point, the device will now turn purple when connected by USB to a computer, and you'll see the file directory including the aforementioned music. You'll also see inside another subfolder for the date that it was captured in, and then we'll finally see the actual audio recording in WAV file format. So at the moment, it doesn't seem like you can change the file format of the recording to something like MP3 for instance, so that might be something to also consider in a future firmware update. and turning things down. I have to say the audio quality has improved in that stereo music mode compared to voice. It sounds just a little bit more full, but it could also be the larger speakers of the computer versus the phone. Regardless though, you can still hear maybe a touch of sight distortion in the background or being super nitpicky, but ultimately it's not being advertised as kind of a hi-fi microphone. It's just good enough to be super compact and being convenient enough to carry around and still easy enough to use for those scenarios. A couple of other remarks after using it for additional meetings and notes is the accuracy is really quite strong when it comes to pickup and recognition in terms of the speed of transcribing it into text and using the ChatGPT model, it will depend on the length of your recording. So as aforementioned, if you have an hour long recording, for instance, for it to parse through, it can take up to, let's say, five minutes for it to fully generate versus a really short snippet, it might just jump out in 10 to 20 seconds. So just keep that in mind in terms of duration. And what's cool is the transcription already works in the aforementioned up to 57 languages, the full list of which you guys can find out more about in the link down below. But in my testing, I tried out Spanish earlier and the transcription there picked up the sentence. In the chat GPT summary, it actually translated it to English, which is interesting. Uh, now, maybe if there was another kind of a language setting in the app, that could also be neat. For instance, if you wanted the summary part to also be in Spanish as your native language, or if you really wanted to convert it to English, that could be a potential software update. And also in terms of Korean, Japanese, Chinese, those languages can also be picked up. Though interestingly, if you're talking in Chinese, ChatGPT result is also in Chinese. And what it boils down to is if you have a international meeting or if you're having a conversation with friends that don't speak the same language, you can actually still capture those notes and it will translate it to you in a format that is still readable. And from what I can tell, the accuracy in the other languages are also equally as impressive. The app also reminds you of its privacy and GDPR compliance for the recordings that you are transcribing. I'll also mention that on their website, you can also try out a demo of how this part works. Of course, you would have to use your own microphone or an audio clip that you've recorded elsewhere, but you can drag it over to their website and actually use this as a demo for how those visualizations will function. And so that is more or less it as far as our quick hands-on review of the Plod Note, this interesting ChatGPT AI-powered smart voice recorder. Similar to how VR was a buzzword many years ago, now really it's AI and ChatGPT, but in this case, I think it's actually making this product category indeed smarter. So regardless of if it's phone calls, 
calls, lectures, notes, the pickup of the microphone part works quite well. And although there are a couple of quirks that we talked about from the UI perspective, I think that can only improve in the future. You can learn more details if interested in the links down below, but for now that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's been the very smart plot note.